I'm Rob Davies. Uh, I'm a professor of a professional practice in physics here at Utah State University. I focus on global change and complexity and critical science communication. Uh, you know, so I never really intended to be doing what I'm doing right now. It was kind of a winding path. I, uh, I went to university initially, South Dakota State University, go Jackrabbits, on an Air Force ROTC scholarship. And like about half the kids my age at that time, I wanted to be an astronaut. And in order to do that, you needed to be a pilot and not just a pilot, but a military pilot and not just a military pilot, but a test pilot. So that was my original plan. Uh, the pilot thing didn't work out in the Air Force, uh, although I did do some flying on my own. But what the Air Force ended up wanting me to do was to be a meteorologist. And so I was a meteorologist for uh, three or four years in the, in the military. I left the Air Force after that and came back to graduate school in physics, all kinds of quantum physics, some having to do with surfaces, some having to do with the quantum behavior of light. And when I finished that, I first took a job with NASA as a scientific liaison working on the International Space Station project in Moscow. And they wanted me to do that because I had spent a year in Moscow as a graduate student as well, so I spoke Russian. And not only Russian, but aerospace Russian. So that was kind of important that you can talk to the astronauts and the cosmonauts and all the engineers. So I did that for about a year and really enjoyed that, um, but found I was really missing physics. So then I took a position, uh, various positions, as uh, visiting assistant professor in Seattle, in Walla Walla, Washington, at Whitman College, and then uh, got a research post at the University of Oxford in England and went there to do quantum optics. And while I was doing that, uh, really enjoying the time in the lab, bouncing lasers all over the place, making measurements, uh, I met some people down at the pub one night who were researchers over at the institute next to my lab called the Global Change Institute. And what these guys worked on was climate change. And I got very interested in the difference between what the public understood about climate change and what science understands about climate change. And this was 2005 or 2006, something like that. And as my position at Oxford came to a close, I decided I might take what we sometimes call a public service sabbatical, a year off, and just do public climate change communication. And I was pretty arrogant, like most physicists are, and I thought, oh, well, the public just doesn't understand because no one's explained it to them well, but I can do that. So I will explain it to them, and they will understand, and we will fix everything. Of course, uh, any psychologists watching this are just going to be laughing their heads off. It certainly doesn't work that way. Um, and so after a year, I thought, you know, I need to keep doing this because they still don't get it, but maybe after another year. So, uh, so I continued on, and I was here at Utah State University. I worked at the Utah Climate Center for a while doing this work. And then the position that I currently occupy was created. And, it's big, and the reason this position was created is because the story is much bigger than climate change. When you start talking about climate change to the public, well, then we want to know what to do. And then you need to talk about other systems besides the climate system, such as, let's say, energy systems, which certainly are a big piece of causing climate change as we burn fossil fuel to produce electricity and to drive our cars and our airplanes. But it's more than that. Uh, it turns out that our food system is a really big producer of greenhouse gases. And so one needs to understand a lot about agriculture. So I started studying that, and it turns out, well, the reason we have the food system we have and the energy system we have is because of the economic system we have. So then I started e studying economics as well. And it turns out you get this uh, bigger and bigger and bigger story. So instead of calling it just climate change, we're going to talk about global change, and that's the work that I do now.